contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Oh, it's Friday. How is everyone doing? It's not Friday. It's Saturday. My week is all screwed up, but it's Friday night, and now I feel all right. How is everyone doing? Well, yeah, had a great day. I know some of you guys just coming right off the uh, four on live stream. Unfortunately, I missed most of that. Um, Saturday is like family day for me, so I was making pizza. It was delicious. I'm full. I'm ready to build Vorons. How is everyone doing today? Um, I don't know what happened in the Voron Live for the most part, so I'm sure you all have questions about that, um, or you're going to ask me stuff that came up on it. We'll get to that. So, what I do want to say, though, is you're going to continue giving stuff away tonight. I have an LDO V0 kit. Everything you need to build a V0, minus the printed parts. Um... If you want to win that, in the description, there's a contest form. Fill it out. Answer the question. It's not that hard. And you have a chance to win worldwide. Also, somebody is back. And not just the Ghostbusters. Say hello to the little Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. As you know, I'm printing a lot of things. And when you want to print a lot of things, you go to Thangs. And thanks to Thangs, they are back sponsoring the stream tonight. Testing out that uh, Dragonfly HIC High Flow Hot End. And why not do that with a big ol' Stay Puff Marshmallow Man? So if you want to print one of these yourself, I have a link in the description. You can go to Thangs, create an account, share your Thangs, download some Thangs, print some Thangs. All on Thangs. So I want to give them a big thank you for sponsoring the stream tonight. And also, because of them, we have another gift card to give away. So we have a $50 Amazon gift card. There is a separate entry for that. So if you want to win the Amazon gift card, you have to sign up for that separately. You do have to be here on the stream at 10 p.m. when I do the draw to be eligible to win that. So make sure you fill that out and you're here for the draw. Isn't that the Polyterra? Yes, it is. This is Poly... Polymaker Polyterra, uh, the teal. And you know what? It's a really nice color. Like, it, it, it's a nice teal. So... I've been, I've been trying to build up my stocks of actual fancy filaments. Ah, you can live up here tonight. You can watch everything from up there. Uh, the rules are mixed up. Uh, okay, so just so you guys are aware, for the LDO draw, I'm not running that. Um, the, the, the entry form, you're good to go until I draw at 10 o'clock. So I'm drawing at 10. You can enter until 10. Um, so that's all NERQ you. My phone's already blown up. There we go. Okay. So hope you're all doing good. Let's get the music started because tonight we are carrying on on Toasty Boy. Right now she is just a frame. Uh, we're going to start hanging some parts off of it and make it look like an actual proper printer thingy. So get the music going and let's start building. So what did I miss? Uh, the Voron Live. Um, I know it some people were expecting a big flashy one like the previous war on live. Um, this one was more of a, we haven't done one in a while and people kept asking for one and there's the point one coming out. Um, so this was just kind of a, a catch up as far as I remember. Um, was anything teased? I don't, I don't know if anything was teased or shown off. Um, I'm not too sure because I didn't really watch it. Uh, RCNFT is selling Boron. Oh, he's selling Boron? Okay, so it looks like the uh, the deal with uh, with Creality went through. Okay, I was, I was hoping that would go through well. There was either Creality or MakerBot, and I was hoping for Creality. Boron CNC! Oh! Is that a thing now? I... I, I don't know how I could have not known about that. Oh my god, I, I am I am shocked that um, there's a Voron CNC in development. Oh my Oh my god. Oh my god.
Who would have thunk that? <laughs> Better start. I got my CNC right there. I got the 3018 right there. All you got to do is instead of uh, China extrusions, you get some Masumi extrusions and boom, it's a Voron. So where are we at? Let's actually start building. So we left off. We have the frame assembled, squared up, and we got the feet seize on. And now we're putting the motors on. So let's get some motors. And these are the AB drives and the motor mounts. So let's get the motors out. So again, um, the motors, the frame, the rails for this build are from LDO. So thanks to LDO, high temperature motors, which I've never actually used before. These are 0.9 degree steppers. Overhead cam, right button? Yay, overhead cam. Zoom you in. So we got these guys. Oop. Why is chat way out there? Scoot you over. There we go. That'll work. So yeah, so we got some 0.9 degree high temp motors. We're gonna roll with those. Not gonna be needing this pancake. I'll figure out something for that. Add it to the pile of motors. And we're going to need some of that. 20 tooth? 20 tooth. What are we listening to? What are we listening to? Yeah, let's go with, yeah, we're listening to house. Let's go with the synth wave tonight. Zorlov, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, that was the uh, house music playlist. There is a dubstep playlist if you guys want. I can play some dubstep tonight if you're in that mood. For those unawares, I use stream beats during stream hours when I'm streaming. And I actually listen to it outside of stream because it's actually really good background music. But it's by uh, Harris Heller. It's royalty free. So I don't get the evil copyrights against me and all that jazz. Hey, AB drive motors. Picture shows the A drive motor left hand side of the printer. B drive is assembled in the same fashion with the pulley orientation flipped. AKA the root of all issues. Grub screws. Use thread locker. Um. Ta da! Nail polish. Good enough. Uh, loose grub screws account for the majority of issues that our users report. Save yourself hours of troubleshooting and apply thread locker to all grub screws during the build. See the product application notes for instructions. And then we're going to go on to that. So what we're actually going to do is build these assemblies, put the motors in, and then put the uh, 20 tooth on so we can line everything up. So, some 90s techno. Dubstep? Okay, we're going with dubstep. Uh, let me find it here. You guys want the dubstep. Where is the dubstep? Oh, come on, Spotify. Load. I don't know which one this is. There we go. Go with this one. Uh, oh, I'm going to have fun pronouncing that. Loic. Loic Loic. Uh, 32. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for all your videos. It helped me a lot with my V0. Awesome. Now get some whiskey. I'm sure having one. Uh, whiskey. Yes, I have some over there. I will get into that when we get to the draw. Ben, $1.49. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, did you see the video comparison LDO and E3D motors so far as TQ is concerned? I have not seen the comparison video. I'm not sure which video is that. Um, yeah, I've used LDO motors. I've used uh, stepper online motors. Most of my printers run stepper online motors. I haven't had any issues with them. And I'm very one of those types of people that if I don't have issues, I'm very unlikely to change. Um, 
I'm I'm just how I am. So M three thirties. It's all in bags. Three thirties. Oh, I'm gonna need some M five shim no. Those out. Up the bag. And 330s, there we go. The thanks giveaway link is in the description. It should be in the description. It's the second one. So there's an entry. The first entry is for if you want to win the LDO kit. And the second one is for the thanks. M550, sorry. Or M530, sorry. I can't read today. So it looks like that goes there. That goes there. And this is actually going to be the first time I check to make sure these uh, CF nylon parts actually kind of work properly. Because uh, I printed them, I've done like the calibration prints on them, but I've never actually made any parts with them. So, uh, this should be kind of somewhat interesting, actually. Where did my file go? Just had it out. File. Anytime you have plastic parts that meet together, it's kind of a good idea to run a file over them just to make sure you don't have any, um, like, blobs of plastic or, you know, anything just kind of holding them up. Especially with, like, a filled filament like the CF nylon here. It has a tendency to not leave a perfectly smooth finish. So just get yourself a file and just run it over. Turn down the music ever so slightly. I can do that. What bed temp? Um, I think I printed at 70. I ended up finding out this is Sane Smart uh, CF nylon. And I found um, 70 on the bed and 185 on the nozzle. Wow, the text is really small. Why is that so small? There we go. A little bit bigger there. Okay. That and bearings. Where did I put all my bearings? Oh, uh, Victor, Jerry Euro, thank you, appreciate it. What are your final thoughts on the H2? Um, if you absolutely need something in that form factor and you get one that doesn't have QC issues, it's not bad. Um, it can't really do high speed printing, it can't push a lot of plastic because the uh, the heater block's only six ounces, or six grams. So there's really not a lot of thermal mass to it. So if you really start pushing it really fast, it's gonna run into issues. Um, but if you need something in that form factor, um, and you get one that doesn't have QC issues, you should be fine. So th that's my hot take on it. You, you kind of pretty much have to justify having one if you get one.
piece. Uh, Just Steve, six ninety nine euro. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, celebrate five years of war on. Grab yourself a drink. I have drink. Um, I will get into drink later. Don't worry. Uh, any settings need when install the LGX? Uh, you're gonna have to adjust your micro stepping, and you are gonna have to adjust your um, uh, your motor current. So that will have to be adjusted, obviously. But other than that, honestly, I'm really liking my LGXs. Um, I had the one installed in uh, Toast in Tallboy, and then the one that uh, the second one uh, is going in Toasty Boy here. I'm actually really liking the LGX. I think it's a, uh, it's actually, um, is it worth the premium price? Kind of hard to say, but it is a good piece of kit. Put it that way. Uh, John Clark, $25. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, sorry. I haven't done it recently. Been distracted with things. Hey, man, you don't need to donate. Okay. Nobody needs to donate. You don't need to donate, but nobody needs to donate. It just, it helps, but you know what I mean. So when you're making the AB drives, um, just be aware that they are mirrored. So one will have a stack of one bearing stack and two, and then the other one will have one here and two there. So they're basically mirrored to each other. Um, Steve, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Canadian too. Woo. Recently discovered Voron Land and been voraciously uh, consuming all of your content. Printing an M4 extruder right now. Keep the vids coming. I plan on it. And for the bearing stacks, it's always the same. You have... That button always pops off. Okay. It's always bearing or correction. Bearing stacks are always the same. So you have your washer, bearing, bearing. So you got two flanges are out so that you have a smooth portion in the middle. Then washer. And then another bearing stack. So you have another washer. More bearings. And these are rain dew bearings. I'm using rain dew bearings. Watching from the hospital. My daughter was born yesterday. Hoping to use her for a scale instead of a banana if I win a V0. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Uh, fun fact. Um, I put the Masumi order in for my V2 um, while my wife was uh, in the hospital giving birth to my thumb son so uh i totally didn't use the fact that she had a um uh what's it called the the, sh the shot they put in the spine to take him out of it i totally didn't use that as a uh to get permission easy totally not Oop, lost a bearing Epidural. Yeah, I totally didn't do that. Oh, shoot. She watches these streams sometimes. Hi, honey. Okay. So, when you... Tighten these down with the washers. You should be actually to be able to tighten these down a, a decent amount, but you do want to make sure that everything is spinning freely. You want to make sure that you're not over tightening it and actually pinching the bearings. So as long as you have the right washers and everything and the right shims and you don't over tighten, they should be pretty good. Remember, you're screwing into plastic here um, because there's really no force on these screws. The screws are just kind of hold everything in place and there's actually screws that go through the whole thing to compress it. So these screws are going into plastic, so make sure you don't over tighten them because one, you risk the bearings seizing up and two, you can actually destroy the plastic part because once you rip the threads out, it's pretty much done. So don't over tighten them. Oh, 
Okay, so where are we at next? So we got the bearing stacks. Okay, time to put the motors on. Well, that should be easy. Motor. And M330 for the wolf. So three of those. I don't remember where the camera is so I can keep it in frame. Uh, I've heard the LDO motors have some problems with PIF parts for the afterburner since there's no groove where the screws are supposed to. Um, they're, if I remember correctly, the first batches of LDO motors didn't work quite correctly, but somebody made a adapted part for those for the afterburner for the, uh, where the drag chain mounts on the back. And those, uh, that part, that printable part is pinned in the LDO channel on the discord. Um, but they've corrected that since. If that is the issue I'm thinking you're referring to. Or a 13, 3018 CNC. It is a fun little thing. You just have to understand it is an engraver that can cut plastic and wood. I've seen videos on YouTube of people cutting like aluminum with it. And if you're cutting aluminum with like a one thou depth of cut, you're more grinding aluminum. You're not really cutting aluminum. So, so what I need to do is actually, I was planning to do it today, but I, I literally didn't have enough time. Um, I got to do some engraving on, I think I'm going to either do the bed. I'm not too sure. Um, might get your guys opinion here. If I'm going to engrave toasty boy on this, I'm not doing it on the frame. Okay. The actual outer frame, because it's going to be covered with panels. So either I'm going to engrave it either here on the bed frame or on this back portion right here on this extrusion. So I'm either going to engrave like Toasty Boy, either on this extrusion or this extrusion. Or both. I don't know. We'll see. David's here. Hi, David. Everyone say hi to David. On the flex sheet. I can't do the flex sheet. I already put the bed together. I could do the, actually, I could do that little piece up front. But Okay, let's put the... Uh, this guy on so that out yeah the front one will always be visible yeah that makes a good point so in lieu of Loctite I use uh, nail polish because uh, it works good enough Because honestly, as long as you torque the screw to spec, it really shouldn't come loose on paper. But uh, we don't live in a perfect world, so. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Because right now what I'm doing is putting in my 20 tooth gear and lining it up. with the, uh, basically see how on the top here, I have two bearings and then on the bottom, I got one. So I'm going to line it up with the top.
what you can actually do is if you have a spare piece of uh Uh, a spare belt, you can actually just put the belt through and just kind of make sure it really lines up. Tighten that. Rotate it. And put the other set screw in. Easy peasy. David, I, I honestly, I think that Cheers reference went above like half the audience here. Like that, that's pushing it for me. Okay, so we got that. One done. The other one in. Do a full-on data plate for the printer. <laughs> hey, Tech! Thank you for becoming a member. Oh, by the way, guys. Um, I was going to make a post about this, but uh, I forgot. Um... So technically, my channel doesn't really have a like one year anniversary because my YouTube channel is from 2006. OK, I've just kind of renamed it over the years. Um, and I've only really actually been uploading videos properly for ah, I've done, like I have some Voron videos from a while ago, but really only in like the last year. Like I started streaming May 5th of last year was the very first stream when we started building uh, um, is it the tall boy? Yeah, the tall boy was the first one. So May is pretty much like the one year anniversary of me actually putting effort into being a YouTube content creator. So I'm thinking of potentially doing a members only stream, but I don't want to uh, paywall any content. That's always been my thing. If I'm doing anything that I would consider like educational, or like building a printer, I don't like putting that behind a paywall. So I will never do something like that and have it be, you have to be a member to see it, okay? So I kind of want to do something with the members, those that support the channel and whatever, help support what I do, because you guys are all awesome. You know, you know if you, the people who aren't members, you guys are still awesome. Um, but I want to do something for you guys so if you, anyone has any ideas, I got a few ideas, but if anyone wants to throw any suggestions out there, I'm all ears. So. And somebody read my little subscription newsletter. I would read the subscription newsletter if I could get the subscription in Canada. I like had Jesse PLA in my box in my inbox, man, ready to order that shit. But you don't ship up here. Screw sort. I do need to sort screws, but I really don't want to put you guys through that. Pizza <laughs> pizza party. <laughs> Tall boy max out ding ding. Yeah, we'll see. I do got the high flow in it. Okay, so what next? What next? Wrong camera. Yeah, I know. I need to do the doc interview. At some point. There we go. Okay, so we have that put together. Oh, hey, here's the other side. We did them both at the same time. So there it's talking about how you mount the uh, the 20 tooth. Make sure everything's lined up, yada yada. Front idlers. Okay, so we're putting the front idlers together. So we got the heat set. I've already put the heat sets in. I did that already. Uh, M5 nut, bearing stack, and that. So let's go back to the big camera. 
and find my bearing stacks or front idlers. So I'm going to put the parts that are built in there. Would you choose the normal TL Dragon or the high flow version for big printer? Big printer with a uh, 0.6, I would go with the high flow. Basically, when it comes to those, my my rule of thumb, if, if you should get a high flow or a standard flow, is if you're only going to print at what would be considered speeds... If you only ever print with a 0.4 nozzle and you're not doing speed benchies, standard flow will sue for you all day long without issue. Um, the moment you start going to bigger nozzles or you want to print at like dumb fast speeds, um, going with a high flow will give you that extra overhead you may want. So. And yes, I totally organized all my parts in a single bin. Because smart. I'm gonna do that. We got one, two, I need one more part. This will get easier as we build more of the print. I think I missed a donation there. S. Marshall, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay. So, there's a trick with this, okay? These are kind of a pain because you have to put like this bearing stack through and then kind of slide this up and that up and it's kind of a pain. Um, what you do is if you have a spare dowel, it makes it infinitely easier because you build everything on the dowel and then you just push it out with the screw. So let's see which one I got here. Cause I think these are all the same. Yeah, I think these are cause on the V2, I believe these are different, but on here, I believe these guys are actually the same. So, I think it doesn't matter which one I grab. So, bearing stack. Michael Fuller, thank you for becoming a member. Make sure you grab a dowel that actually fits on your bearings if you want to do this trick, by the way. Funny, I got like dowels in here from like the original Mobius. I can tell because I cut them out to the, like, the grooves properly and all that. So, bearing stack. And then this guy goes. Like that. And then it's an M540. Yeah, the, so I... Uh, Believe me, I want to talk about the uh, the dragon thing too. 
but really not everyone has all the details right now. So try to avoid speculation, guys. Like, believe me, I'm all for lower cost and in my opinion, better hot ends. Um, but got to play within the rules. Why they no license the patent? Um, to my knowledge, they believe the patent didn't have merit. So there's like, if you, if you look at the patent, it's really throw throw everything, including the kitchen sink in. Um, it's a very convoluted. I, I don't know what the proper word is, but it, it's a it's a we threw everything in the patent to cover pretty much everything, and it's a utility patent, which is like the idea of it or the concept of it. So. That's like saying, hey, I can't build a Ford Focus, but you can't build any other car with four wheels too, with a two liter engine. Like, it, I don't know, It's I'm, I'm not a patent law guy, but yeah. So from my understanding, the heat break isn't the issue because apparently they tried to get a patent on it, but from what I've heard, their patent was denied because there's existing prior artwork for it. Um, so they couldn't patent that, but they patented the fact that the heat break is fully supported. So, or supported by something structural. Um, that's like the, the one handed nozzle change we all like. So that's the part. That's why if you notice, you can still get dragon flies, but not dragons. So. Uh, can you do a print in place, fully movable V zero on tall boy just for fun? I don't think I could. I could print something the size of a V zero. I could print something the size of V zero on a two fifty here. It's a small printer, but uh, print in place and movable. That's pushing it. All I know is E3D needs to come out with the frickin' V7, okay? Um, the rate things are going, the very first hot end I bought for my very first built myself printer was a E3D V6. The the, the hot end in the, my original V1 100, back when Toasty Boy was a V1, was a E3D V6. I bought a legit E3D V6 as my first hot end. And the way things are going, the first hot end my son is gonna buy when he's an adult is an E3D V6. Because uh, V7 went. Come on, guys. So there we go. So you want these to have movement, okay? So this is your front idler. You got your bearing stack in there, right? Okay. And you want the bearing stack to be able to move up and down. So you're going to have a screw go through here. Um, that is the next part on the manual. And this uh, M340 with a washer here, this will allow you to tension your belts. Now, where are my M340s? Try not to lose anything. M340s. Oh, God. Not, not, not already. Oh, those are M330s. I already lose a bag of screws. <laughs> Seriously, already? How? How? How have I done this already? No, that's...
Oh, there they are. Found them. Yeah, Groove Mount will always be supported because, let's be honest, the V6 is an industry standard, and so many things work with that that it just makes no sense to drop support for it. Like, RCF runs V6s for the most part. There, there's nothing wrong with the hot end. Like, the hot end is a perfectly functional hot end. Um, and for the vast majority of users, you're really not going to see any performance difference. Um, like, let's be honest, if you take the Mark 8 hot end in an Ender 3, you replace the, 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 the aluminum block with a copper block, put a bimetallic heat break on it, and put a decent nozzle in it, you pretty much have 99% of a mosquito. Or any other similar hot end. Navy Chief, $20. Appreciate it. Let's start the exotic filament fund for Toasty Boy. I've already got some filaments. I, I'm already starting to build my stock up. So thank you, though. Appreciate it. You can always use more. Okay, so get that in there. That's good. Uh, Ender 3 V2 with Clipper uh, versus the Lions. I would take the Lions. I'm probably quicker than the Lions. Okay. So we got the Idly Boys together. So what's next? So both of these are built up. Compare your assembled parts to the graphics shown here. Okay. So, let's see if I'm looking at the front. Okay, so I got that guy there. And this guy here. That guy's on the floor. So, oop. So that one looks okay. And that one looks okay. We are good. Yay. Gantry! Hey, we're putting the gantry on. Slide into place. Loosen the screws and slide into place. Okay. I can do that. advantage would it theoretically have over v7 we don't know anything about the v7 like e3d has been putting out like all-in-ones and all kinds of like a uh, uh, multi uh filament stuff and like i i want them to put out a good hot end again it's like when a company makes something and they're good at it but then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. It's like Konami. Yeah, we we like our pachinko machines. No more, you know, or not. Is it Konami? Yeah, it's Konami. Yeah, we like our pachinko machines. No more Metal Gear Solid for you guys. Uh, Fod, I am building a 250 millimeter spec uh, Voron V1.8. What filaments did, you, did I order? I haven't ordered any yet. I have some in already. Um, CF nylon, CF polycarbonate, um, CF uh, PC, CPE, um, and glass filled nylon as well. 
I'm not going to be trying to do Peak or Ultim or any of that stuff. Just so you know. Okay, so put the B motor in, put the A motor in. I can do that. Okay, so slide those back. Uh, rear crossbar, slide into place. You may need to loosen the M5. So, okay, so let me spin this guy around. Actually, I might have screwed up. Yeah, I screwed up. I need to turn this around. I have an extrusion. I have an extrusion. Extrusion. Extrusion with a scuff in it. And I don't want it being on the front. So I got to spin this. What time is it anyways? 8.45. So I'm going to give you guys a reminder. If you have not signed up for the draw to win a Voron V0 kit, everything to build a Voron V0, except for the printed parts from LDO Motors, make sure you sign up. It's in the description below. And while you're signing up for that, if you are in the stream right now, which if you're watching this, you are, unless you're watching this from the future, in that case, hello future. Please tell me Dogecoin didn't go to some stupid high price because I used to have like 40,000 of them on a hard drive that I lost like 11 years ago because who cared about Dogecoin back then? But anyways, um, yeah, sign up for that. Because if you're here right now, there's the draw for the Amazon gift card from tonight's stream sponsor. Thanks. So while you're signing up, for the LDO V0 kit, you can sign up for the Thangs giveaway for an Amazon gift card. And I believe that one is open to anyone who can get Amazon. You must be in the channel watching the stream when I do the draw. So I got to at you and uh, you got to be here to win the Amazon card. The LDO Motors kit for the V0, you do not need to be here because that draw has been open for a while now and we know people live all over the world and I know this is too late for a lot of people and shop LTT store while you're at it okay there we go dogecoin is 48 cents if I have 40,000 I would have $20,000 awesome I'm losing out $20,000 Neat. So make sure you, you like that smash button and, and become a member. And I have a Patreon and an only Benchies. Yeah, I got to make up for that now. Shit. Why do you have to let me know that? No, um, I mined Dogeco Dogecoin uh, when it like first came out eons ago. Like I'm sure a lot of people did. And I had, I think, 40,000 at one point. But then they were like worth like 3% of a cent or something like 0.03 cents for the longest time or something stupid. And everyone kind of moved on. And that random hard drive, who even knows where that is? So at least I'm not the guy who paid 20,000 Bitcoin for a pizza. Don't feel bad. I received 15 Bitcoin from exchange for signing up forever ago. That history is long gone. Here's the thing. People always like, oh man, I could have had this if I didn't that. Well, yeah, that's kind of how all of life is. If, if you could go back in time and change one thing, we'd all be millionaires. Like, it's not like, you know, you can change it right now. It's like, oh, well, I, I didn't know there would be a global pandemic. And if I bought, you know, crates of webcams i could have sold them for 250 dollars a pop on amazon and bought them off aliexpress for five dollars each well i could have made so much well you... nobody knows like that's kind of how things work 
The problem with CF now, it's really stiff. So getting this in here was kind of a pain. Yeah, hockey cards, baseball cards, Pokemon cards. I'm sure everyone had a bunch of random Pokemon cards back in the day. Like, geez, oh man, I wish I had, you know, when I was 10, I wish I had walked into a Toys R Us and bought, like, a bunch of unopened boxes of the first run of Pokemon cards and then told myself, I'm going to put these in a, in, a, in a safety deposit box for the next 20 years because then I'll be a millionaire. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, hindsight's 2020. 20. You don't know, right? Like, how many times are you putting a print together and real halfway, realize halfway through you did it wrong? You gotta take it all apart. Okay, so we got this rear in. Now we gotta put, uh... So M510s and okay, so I gotta put these in. So preload T nuts, you won't be able to access the spot after the rails are installed. Okay, so I gotta put these all in now. So what are these? M5, what size? M510 and five T nuts and then I need one M3 T nut. Wow, there's a lot of T nuts. Okay. 2020 was time 2020 was a write off. I, I did my, my work for my annual work review uh, when I filled it out. What did you accomplish last year? Um, I didn't get the Rona and I didn't die. Nothing else really mattered. What did anyone do last year? Okay, let's center this. That's pretty centered. I can live with that. Putting in tea nuts on stream. So much fun. These are tight. Where is... Hmm. So the LVO T-nuts are a little tight. I think that is... I don't know if it's the T-nuts or the frame. Let me grab some of my old spec ones. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's the frame. Oh wow, those are tight. That's tight. There we go. Just gotta get it going. Let me screw these down so I don't gotta chase them after this. Have I tried the Panzer chain? I have not. I'm using I guess chain on this one.
Yeah, trouble getting the tea nuts. Yeah, I guess this is a common thing. I think this is just the way their profile is for the aluminum extrusions. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of is their profile just as that. centered enough I don't think it matters just appearance I do have I don't want to use them but uh I do have the Masumi really fancy uh, T nuts that are spring loaded those are really nice, but I don't want to use them. I've had them for years. Uh, if the bottom of the T-nut is too pointy, it won't fit. Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that, I guess. It doesn't look pointy. I see what you mean, though. Well, at least you don't got to worry about them being loose. It's like when you cross-thread a screw, right? It's just natural anti-seize. Or, uh, Loctite. Uh, Josh Townsend, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everything. Cast aluminum beds. Yeah, cast aluminum beds. That one goes in fine. When Nero NFT. Okay. Is NFT just another like fly by night pump and dump type thing? Like trying like the, the new cryptos you see pop up all the time? I'm thinking that's what NFT is. It's just a few people create something, the first few sell for millions, and then it's a mad rush to just make something. And then everyone moves on to something else. Scott, thank you for coming a member. Non-fungible tokens, it's a term for crypto. Yeah, that sounds like another friggin' uh another I'm gonna make a million. I'm gonna be the first one to come out with something, so I'm gonna make millions and everyone else can uh Yeah. Uh, the heck is a fungible? I honestly, you know what a non-fungible token is? It's we need a name uh, other than uh Bitcoin pictures. So it, it sounds really cool and it's got a neat acronym. So when it's on the news, it sounds cool. So we can get more people into it. I'm, I'm going to take a, I'm not going to take, I'm going to take a picture of a ding ding printed on a Voron and that's going to be a, an NFT. I'm going to make that an NFT. If that's how it works, that's what we're going to do. You know what this reminds me of? You know, when Abe Simpson's talking to Homer and he's like, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm it or now what I'm with isn't it. And what's it is strange and different. And it'll happen to you one day. I think I'm getting to that age. It's like, what the? I think it was Fortnite. Fortnite. Seeing somebody actually do a Fortnite dance in real life was like, I think that was the, okay, now my hair is starting to drop out and I understand why type moment in my life. Oh, these really don't want to uh, go in. Some of these really don't want to go in. What's a ding ding? Just Google ding ding on Thingiverse. Midlife crisis Nero. <laughs> I'm only 33.
Yeah, these are kind of annoying. These uh, the Roland's not working properly, unfortunately. So like, are you just supposed to, are they supposed to come go in at one point? There we go. Oh, these are tight. Okay, there we go. I think I remember seeing somebody mention this, so I think they're aware of this. Yeah, I don't think I can put these ones in right now though, because of, uh... yeah, I don't think I could put these ones in exactly. Because I got to put something over this. Okay. Yeah, we have that one I can't put in. Okay, so now I gotta flip it and do the bottoms. Something went black. I don't know what that was. Tap, tap. Annoying. There we go. Okay, now it's in. The M3s went in okay. Well, at least the one M3 I did. Uh, how are you controlling your enclosure heater? What enclosure heater? So fun fact, um, when you have a 500 watt bed in your printer, you really don't need much else as long as you insulate it. Most of the time when you see people putting uh, in enclosure heaters in their printers to get like ABS temps, it's because they're using a, a something not proper to enclose it. Like a lax enclosure isn't really that insulating. You want to actually insulate your printer if you plan on printing hot stuff. Like, I already got a 500 watt heater in the bed in the printer, plus a 50 watt hot end. How much more heat do you need? What, RCF's here? Where is RCF? Oh, there's Max. Hi, Max! Max Olin, 1999. That frame is rad. The frame is upside down and red. How rad is that? Uh, peak and peak and PI. I'm not printing peak and peak and ultimate and all that. This is for everything other than those stupid high temp plastics. Uh, John Kohlberg, 999. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, love your streams. Built my 2.4 following you. Follow you when you're building my switch wire in 0.1. Awesome. So I, I will do um, upgrading um, the V0 to a 0.1 at some point. Probably after I finish the Toasty Boy build. But I will keep the belted Z, I think. Because one, I don't have the integrated lead screw motor for the uh, that. And two, I kind of like the belted Z on it. 
So I'm going to keep the belted Zed, but I'm going to definitely go with the direct feed tool head and all that jazz. Up update any parts on the gantry that needed swapping out, etc. So. Peak is $300 for a 750 grams pool. That is pretty much the reason too. If I'm paying $300 for 750 grams of printed parts, I'm uh I'm going to pay a machine shop to machine them out of aluminum or machine them myself. Can't you print the other filaments on a normal bot? You can. Um V226, which is this is pretty much a spec V2.4, uh printed all the parts in CF nylon for this guy. But Plastics print better at higher temperatures. So I should be able to get 70C in here with just insulating it. Uh, Kennedy Dog, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, just measure the Masumi slots are 0.5 millimeters deeper than LDO slots. Maybe that does why it doesn't work. And maybe you could double check my measurement. How deep is the slot supposed to be? Because on LDO, it is 6 millimeters. Okay, so we got that. Front idlers, put the front idlers on. I could do that. Okay, and the screws are up. So I gotta loosen that. But I can't loosen that. There's no point in loosening that. Well, maybe a little. There we go. They can get a 2.4. We've tested that. Eddie the Engineer got his 2.4 to 70C inside just by insulating the hell out of it. So if he can get that on that, I should have no problems getting that on this. Go. Got those on. Uh, can Clipper run servo motors? I, I think so. Um, it depends on the drivers. If the driver is supported by Clipper, you should be able to, but I've never checked. That's not something I've really looked into. As for servos in a 3D printer, um, a good 3D printer, like all the Borons, um, any good 3D printer that's Core XY and has a motion system capable of moving fast enough can outrun any hot end out there um, with NEMA 17s. So if I can already outrun the ability, like already outrun what I can get with NEMA 17s, um, what do you get with servos? Other than like, okay, potential for a little bit better positional accuracy. Which if you're printing at the speeds where you're almost out running a hot end, um, you're probably not getting good print quality anyways. Okay, so speeds and higher excels. Okay, um, go look at all the speed benchies that people have done. Uh, Josh Murray, you've been doing speed benchies. Um, look how, like, the best quality speed benchies people are pulling off in terms of print quality, okay? A, a sub 10 minute benchy looks like poop, okay? So if you can go even faster, all you're doing is going faster. You're not improving print quality. 
servos won't buy you any print quality because the extruder and the motor or the the cooling and all that's the same so if you were to go faster you would just have a quicker ugly benchy If you want this printer, Dan, um, I'm sure we could work out an extremely reasonable offer. My billable rates are 80 an hour. Um, so plus materials times three. Because uh, I've touched them, so they're worth more. Right? Plus building fee. Yeah, he also has some crazy cooling solution where he's basically like blowing air across the whole print surface. Or is that Mirage? I can't remember. Have him print a full set of Voron, uh, a full Voron PIF plate at those speeds. And if the quality comes out great, then I will be honestly super impressed. But until then, it's, it's, a, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against them. But I see it akin to like overclockers that are getting like, oh, I pushed my Pentium 4 to 8 gigahertz. Like, it looks really cool, but <laughs> you got to sit there and constantly pour uh, liquid nitrogen on it to keep it stable. And it's, it's not usable and you're sucking down, you know, a small power plant's worth of power. Ugh. How am I doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. We're going to give away an LDO kit in uh, 45 minutes. Okay, here's the thing. Um, so NFTs. NFTs are pictures. So can you do a 3D model NFT? So if... Can you turn the, Vor the Voron CAD into an NFT? Hey, Max, um, if you're still here, look about turning the actual CAD on your uh, the original CAD for the V2.0 into an NFT because that's a classic. So turn that into an NFT. There you go. So that way somebody can actually buy a Voron. Linear rail mounting. Mind the carriages. The carriages are designed to slide along the rail easily. This unfortunately includes sliding off the rail. Dropping the carriages will likely irreparably damage it. Use a ball end driver. The top extrusions will block access. So I got to put some rails on. Cool. Every other hole. You don't need to put them in every hole. So I've got um, LDO kind of hooked me up with a, a bouquet of rails. And uh, I kind of goofed and let him sit in the ultrasonic a little too long. And uh, a little bit of uh, grime built up on them because they sat in the yucky part of the so I cleaned them as best I could, but they're, they're all good. They're all greased up. So I did that all before stream. So you don't have to sit here and watch me clean rails and grease them up. NFT is just a URL. Wait, that's it. So I could sell like only benchies as an NFT. What the heck? I, I, I don't get it. Toasty boys getting railed. Eh. Toby, thank you for coming a member. Okay. Time to rail this guy up. So I've got a bunch of rails. Which ones am I going to use? That one seems good. That one seems good.
<laughs> Waiting for somebody to make the joke. Yeah, we'll go with these three. And that's going to be one of the X-Rails. Okay. So we'll go with those two. Or... Too suggestive. Hey! If you're up this late, you can handle it. Happy with the LDO rails? Yeah, they're fine. I, I've only ever used CNA rails. It's actually the first time I'm using LDO. And they're fine. They say LDO on them. LDO. They're all covered in, like, grease. Okay, so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight M3 Tina. Ah, ah, ah. Six to oh yeah, you East Coasters. It is nine twenty here. Two, three, four. Or West Coast, yeah. It's a coast. Okay, that one's gone. Oh, uh, two of the eight rails passed. It's not that they passed. It's when you have all good rails, it's trying to find the best rails. But not the two best, because the two best are what you use on your X-axis. And then if it's a V2, use your worst rails on the... On the Z. But essentially what you do is, in my opinion, you want the rails that... I like... Personally, the way I like my rails are they're tight, but there's no stick. Because that means there, there shouldn't be any play. I don't know, it's... it's I built like five printers. This is printer number six. You kind of get a feel for it, I guess, would be the best way of saying it. I don't know. All I know is I'm waiting for the uh, me to drop one of these. Up rails. So hopefully today, by the way, the plan is to hopefully get the gantry assembled. Wow, they stick. Come on. One, two, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight. Okay. Have you ever used MG94 ABS? I have not. I have not. I don't even know where to find that up here. 
I remember looking for it a while ago and I couldn't find it. Yeah, the red anodized, I really like the anodization on these. It, it, it is nice. Okay. So other people got those fancy magnetic trays to hold screws. I've got like old China that I found. Get in your hole. So when you're putting the rails in, again, you don't need to screw every hole. It's every other hole. And then what you do is you don't tighten the screws. You put them in loose. So that way you should have room to play to kind of move your rails around a bit. So if you didn't line up your T-nuts properly, you can kind of shimmy everything into position and drag stuff along until you do. And then once you get everything good, then you put it into the correct like position along the rail and put your guides on and tighten everything down. At least that's how I do it and it's always worked. So that's how I roll. And these are M38s by the way. And of course, while you're doing this, try not to let the carriages fall off the rail. Otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. By the way, guys, I anytime you see me just walk over to the computer and click and then walk back, if you guys, it's the way YouTube is. If you guys swear, like even saying shit, um, or just try to post a link, um, YouTube blocks it. I have to approve it, and I don't know how to turn that off. So, yeah, it's annoying. So no, no, no words in chat. Frankly, I don't give a fuck, but. Yeah, Raymond, making me work. You know how hard it is to moderate this chat of... Oh my god, we got 400 people. Hi, 400 people! I'm sure you're all here for the LDO draw. That will be in... Uh, 24 minutes, or what? 34 minutes. So make sure you signed up. Real goes on the top, right? Yeah. So make sure you're signed up for the LDO draw for the chance to win a V0 kit. Also, thanks to the stream or tonight's stream sponsor, Thangs, um, these guys right here, go to their website, sign up, download the Stave Puff guy. He's up here. He's a marshmallow. Um, we have a $50 Amazon gift card that I give away. So two winners tonight. So you got these little printed guides. You can print them off. And this makes sure your rails are lined up on the extrusion and they're centered. So what I do is I get all the screws in. I make sure it's equidistant spaced. Put the guides on. And then I go through, I, I finger tight the screws in order. And then I go down and actually like tighten them. And having a ball end Allen key makes this so much easier. Is a sign up for the giveaway. Yes, it's the same sign up. So if you've already signed up once, please don't enter again. It's the same one. Or it's the same one for the LDO giveaway. I believe the LDO one has been posted for a while. Definitely getting to the point where I need mods. I don't I've only ever banned two people from chat. And one guy was spamming and the other guy was just being a dick. Because it's my channel. I reserve the right to ban you for whatever reason I feel like. But, um... Like, I don't, we don't have spammers. We don't have, I don't know. I'm sure at one point I'll make Raymond a mod or something. Uh, print quality difference? No, there really shouldn't be.
Depends how they're loaded and everything, and they should be okay, I believe. At least with the forces we're involved with. If you were making a CNC machine, I'm sure it matters a lot more there. But for a 3D printer, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Draxel, thank you for becoming a member. Okay. Yep. Now we gotta do it all over again. On this side. Raymond for mod banned everyone. <laughs> do you not know what you have unleashed? You've doomed us all! My little alley go. Speaking of CNC subtractive manufacturing, yes, CNCs. There are lots of CNCs. CNC is computer numerical control. So a 3D printer is a CNC machine. Subtractive manufacturing is when you start off with a block of something or some other random shape, and you remove stock to create your final shape. 3D printers are commonly known as additive manufacturing, where you add material to make your final shape. So they are basically opposites of each other. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Oh wait, I'm putting in the wrong ones. I need M3s, not M5s. Oops-a-doodle. Speaking of CNC, RCF. RCF is the founder of Voron Design. Okay, I think that M5 T nut's gonna live in there now. Don't worry about getting it out later. Francisco, five dollars. Don't ban me, bro. <laughs> okay, you were nice. Me, donate five dollars to Super Chat. Raymond for mod fund. And he's not going to get paid. Do do I look like a, a Twitch streamer? Can't afford that. Like, if, if I did Voron building in a, in a hot tub streams, maybe. You know, you guys haven't seen what's below the apron, so I, I could, you know, devolve into that if I really needed to. I mean, he's in Petchy. No, everything is CF Nylon on this guy. One, two, six, seven, eight. Can't stream when. <laughs> the 1.8 and the 2.4 share the same gantry. The 1.8 gantry is just upside down because rails are on top because you have the rods for the Z underneath. So it can't go underneath like on the B2s. So theoretically on paper, both of them have the same print characteristics. Um, the gantry on the V1 is actually slightly more rigid because you don't have it mounted to uh, the, uh, the Z blocks. So technically the gantry on this is more rigid, but the weight's also higher. So yeah. There's the potential for more rigidity, but there's also the potential of more moving, you know, it's swaying around, essentially. So. But the print quality should be the same. Like, all Vorons print good. Your, your slicer settings will affect your print quality more than pretty much any single component on your printer. If 
If you donate, I will keep it on. Sure, yes. If you donate, I will keep the the, the apron on. Uh, do you need to resize the parts to see if not? No, I did have to go through my slicer and print a lot of calibration parts. And I ended up printing everything with the, um, oh man, I had to play around with flow. Basically everything over extruded. CF nylon, okay, nylon is a thicker plastic than ABS. So it doesn't flow as well through like smaller nozzles. It's, it is a, it's a thicker plastic. And then especially once you add, you know, carbon fiber to it. So I had a lot of issues where I had to really drop my flow rate down to get within spec parts. And then I also did the, um, it's a setting in Prusa Slicer where you basically like offset the outer perimeter like inward. So I think it was like 0.5 millimeters or something like that. I, I I don't know. I was playing with settings for like, I spent a whole day doing nothing but print the same parts over and over and then tweak the settings just to make sure everything fit together well. And eventually I got it down and everything's good and all the screws go in, everything great. So I'm all happy now. But uh, yeah, I did have to tweak a lot of settings to get it to, uh, to work right. But the parts were not resized. I didn't go through and like shrink everything. Like, like everything lines up the same. It's just, I had to compensate for the, uh, the expansion of the plastic. You know where you can find resources? You would just have to look up using an MMU on a uh, clipper machine. So I think just search like MMU2 clipper and then that would pretty much be it. You would just have to configure your boron config for whatever you need for that. Can I do a video on the finer points of CF nylon printing? I, I might. Um, I touched on it a little bit, but it comes down to just making sure your, uh, your tune is okay. Like you have to go like literally all I printed in CF nylon are these parts. I'm sure once I get toasty boy actually up and operational, I will spend more time doing content in regards to those plastics. Um, but as it is right now, I don't think I have enough. I, I can't put enough on paper to be an authority on it or anywhere close to that. So like I've, I've put less than a spool of CF nylon through a printer. ABS, hey, I know a bit. I did a video series on ABS. I didn't, I didn't even, that whole video series, that four part video series, didn't even touch tuning ABS prints. I think Doc is planning on doing something like that. Cause it, that, Tuning is really printer by printer because every printer kind of behaves differently, even different borons. Like my V2, my two V2s are completely different from each other. Debating clipper on an Ender 6. I'll make that simple. Do it. Clipper is great. Put it on all your printers. Yeah, I printed the CF nylon here at 280 actually. 280 on the nozzle and 70 on the bed. And uh, I think I have a spare part. Yeah. So uh, this is a spare part. I can hear cracking, but it... okay. Now I'm gonna break it. Like, yeah. There we go. So let me find, uh, I think my son, uh, my son got into them. Yeah, those are gone. I used to have spare parts. I used to have a bag of, or box of spare parts and I think I threw it out, but I was going to grab a spare. Um, I might have one. Let me check. Where would I have 
put it? Oh, up here. Do we use them? No. Nope. I thought I had a, ba a box of spare parts somewhere. I might have thrown it out. I don't keep as many spare parts as I used to because I have spare printers. But, um... I did compare it to an ABS part, and it does feel more rigid, so. AVE reference spited. Ooh, which one? Hey, look, the rail goes. Okay. So we got our Y rails on. Remember, guys, you got 20 minutes to enter the contest. Bed. Oh, hey, we're putting the bed together. Okay. Um... It's my favorite infill. It depends. Um, if I'm printing parts, I usually use grid. Um, grid, I like for parts. Um, that's just what I use. If I'm printing fancy stuff, like this Stay Puff Marshmallow Man that you can find on Thangs.com, links below. Um, that guy, I like uh, for low percentage infill, I like gyroid. Gyroid for low percent, grid for high percent. Sometimes I'll use cubic for a high percent. Let's build a bed. So I need the two shortest ones. These two. And I think it's the two long ones. Yeah, so the two short ones. And I think it's the two long ones with the holes. Yeah. Hit the bed. Do I have spare extrusions? I don't even know. What else do I need extrusions for? There's the rear box. Oh, the gantry. Yeah, okay, I got enough extrusions. Yeah. I'm like, why do I have this many extrusions? It's like, oh, the X gantry. Okay, scroll back up. Let's put the bed together. What's the biggest 3D printing failure experience? Like a machine breaking? Um, I've had a bearing come loose, or not a bearing, a Z block come loose on Tallboy during a print. That actually the print finished fine, um, but literally one of the whole Z carriages fell down. Um, wire breaks. I've had wire breaks over the years, especially back before I went to the silicone wire, back when we were running the, the Cat 5. Um, I had wire breaks quite often back in those days. And, uh, that's pretty much it. I really haven't had like um, the giant uh, like clogged nozzles. I run socks on most of my machines and uh, plated nozzles. So I usually don't have issues with like, you know, waking up the spaghetti and a giant blob of plastic on my hot end. Usually it's just spaghetti. Uh, I haven't tried Super Slicer yet. I tried it a while or I tried to download it a while ago and like the... The download didn't finish, and then I'm like, ah, screw it, I'm just going to go back to Prusa Slicer. So I know I need to try it, but Prusa Slicer is working for me right now, and it took me a long enough to switch from Cure to Prusa Slicer, so. Right now, my go-to is my Vorons are running Super uh, Prusa Slicer. Um, I started using Prusa Slicer when I built the switch wire because I like the, uh, this guy. Because Prusa Slicer has a really good Y splitter change uh, swap over um, ability built into it, essentially. So I had less issues with the dual extrusion with the switch wire, so I use the switch wire. But um, the stuff like the Ender or machines that are stock, I use Cura. And I'm using the beta version of the Arachne Slicer or engine Cura for that. Never seen so many people in stream before. 450 and 199 likes. I don't chase likes. Do likes even mean anything on a live stream? Like, I know on videos, if, like, because you can't... Really, the only people that see the stream are subscribers. 
Like, I don't think you could see live streams if you're not subscribed to the channel on YouTube. I, I, I don't know how, if that's how it works or not, but I thought you had to be subscribed to a channel to see the live stream. So likes don't really mean as much, if that makes sense. I don't know. But yes, uh, like that smash button. Found this channel through live stream. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, timey showed up. Okay. Go to come here. I drag you down here now. Hey. Oh, good boy. Oh, he was down here? Huh. Did you have a good day? Kisses? Oh. You need a bath. Go outside and spray with the hose. Stinky puppy. Stinky puppy. You want out? Where he's gonna lie down? You gonna lie down? Okay. Get it out. Yeah, he needs a bath. Okay. Duff six eighty nine, Duggo. Uh, they're saying hi. I don't know if you can hear her, but she says hi. Eddie, five dollars. Thank you for job of treats. Uh, the V zero giveaway form should be open. You should be able to still enter. I don't think it shut down. Let me check. Oh, dog's on. Because you should be able to enter that till ten. Let me double check here. No, that's not what I wanted. I don't want emoji. What the heck are you doing, Google? Roll V. Oh, I guess it closed. Oh, sorry. I guess the, uh... Near Q. Oh, he closed it to clear out dupes. Because I guess a lot of people were entering twice. Um, so he might have closed it to clear out dupes. He might reopen it. I can't see Discord, unfortunately, when I'm streaming. Um... So, I can't really see it, unfortunately. Um, but, I will try and get it open again. We'll see. But the draw is in 13 minutes. So, if you haven't signed up for at least the LDO draw, or the LDO draw is the one that's closed. If you haven't signed up for the, uh, the Thangs draw for the gift card, I will be doing that at 10. You have to be in chat to win. Oh, that's actually square. Okay. So I actually forgot to run the uh, this through the ultrasonic. So I'm going to have to do that. Okay, so that's 35. Dropping stuff. Ah. Justin, twenty dollars whiskey fund. Oh, I'm good there. So, for those unawares, I live in Ontario, Canada, and uh, right now our government decided that I uh, can't do anything. So, uh, I, I I made the pilgrimage to the to the local liquor control board of Ontario uh, store 
to uh, take care of myself for the next few days, weeks or months or who knows anymore, honestly. That's why. That's tight. That's why I can't trust it. There we go. Seven. Your government just decided to get forget about COVID. Yep, pretty much. Ontario's locked out. Well, at least they got smart. They decided, hey, um, let's shut down all the parks. You know, the outdoor parks that kids play in. Let's shut those down. Um, but then the government realized that was dumb and decided not to. Which, uh, as a parent of a three-year-old, I am ever thankful that they decided that was dumb. So... That's all good there. Okay. So now I gotta put the bearings in. Gotta, okay, you know what? I'm gonna skip putting the bearings in because I actually, I don't think, yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't run them through the ultrasonic yet. And I'm sure you guys don't wanna see that on stream. So I'm just going to skip putting the bearings in for now because we're coming up on the draw anyways. So I'm just going to put the frame on, put this part together, and then I'll put the bearings in next week because I do want to run them through the ultrasonic. Am I missing pieces? Two, three. Or actually, no, actually these ones are clean. I think I did clean these ones. I'll let you know in a second. Yeah, they're clean. Okay, I gotta pack them with grease though. Try and wear gloves whenever you're uh, working with greases or oils. It just makes cleanup easier. Okay, so for grease, I literally don't get fancy. I legit just use a white lithium for pretty much everything. Um, when it's white lithium and dog hair. So for packing a bearing, it's it's not hard. If for anyone's never packed a bearing before, um, it's relatively straightforward. Get something like a, um, I know I have a flathead somewhere. I'm not. <laughs> okay. But anyways, what you're going to do is basically put grease inside the bearing itself. And then you're going to use your... Seriously? How do I not... Oh, I know. I'll use this. Um, you're going to put grease into the bearing. And then you're going to put your thumb over one end and use a rod, like an 8mm rod. And push that in. And that'll kind of force the grease into all the ballways. So, I got my dropper here full of uh, grease. Splooge some in there. And then you take your... That's filled with grease. You don't need to fill it all the way because obviously you're not going to use it all. And then take your rod, get it started, put your thumb over the end, and squish. And that... Usually do it from both ends. Should pack the bearing with grease. 
and then you walk around with grease all on your hands while you look for your paper towels. So it's not hard to pack bearings with grease. That's the proper way to do it. If you're trying to put grease on stuff by like putting grease on the rod and then running the bearings over it, um, that don't work. It's like trying to put oil or grease on your rails and then running your carriages over it. That isn't going to work because the rubber on the ends is a wiper. So it's just going to prevent most of it from going to where you want it to go. And these are Zed, so uh, they're not going to be doing high speed movement. You just want to make sure they don't bind, essentially. Now, yes, there are proper greases and, you know, this generic tube of white lithium that I've had for five years isn't the proper spec according to the manufacturer grease. But it's a 3D printer and it works good enough. Do I have a video on how to pack the carriages? Um, what I do is I clean the carriages and then I flip the carriages down face down. And then if you look at the back, you can see a gap between the carriage and the rail where you can see the ball bearings. And I just kind of do the same method where I just squish grease into there and move the carriage around. And that's usually good enough. Some carriages, the larger size ones actually come with grease grooves or grease like access ports for like a grease gun. Um, most of the Chinese MGM-9 do not. I think the legit Highwind MGN9s do, but um, if you're buying Highwinds off AliExpress, odds are they're not Highwinds. There we go. All looped up. Bring the rod. Right there. And then also for your rails, don't put your rails to get away dry. If you clean your rails and uh, like clean them, wipe them down with ISO, they are bone dry. Don't do that. Spray them with like some WD-40 or gun oil or some sort of oil. Wipe off the excess and then put them away. If you put your rails away bone dry, they will rust. Regardless of where you get them from, steel is steel and steel can rust. So... But for a 3D printer, yeah. Yes, WD-40 is not oil, but it, it does act like a rust preventative. Like it's water displacement. It prevents it from rust, or prevents it from rusting from water. Or it prevents water damage. But uh, like I I have a, what is, what is it I use? I've had this stupid thing for a while. Rem oil. I have this like can I picked up years ago of rem oil. What I'll do is I'll spray my rails down with that and then I'll just wipe off the excess. Uh, Beanstalk, thank you for becoming a member. Okay, so we're going to do the draw now. Did you miss the draw? No, you did not. So let me make sure. Let's see here. Okay, so the LDO uh, signup is closed. Um, let me just make sure with NearQ that we are good to go on the draw. Because he is the one organizing it all. And then we will also be doing a draw for a gift card from uh, Thanks, the sponsor of the stream tonight. So, oh, Nirku's there. Good to go. Okay, everyone. So, let me pull up the Wheel of Names. Big money, big money, big money. I want to use that marble game. What's that marble game all the streamers use? The problem is with the marble game, it, uh, you have to, I think you have to use Twitch for that. Or it's like an actual game. You have to download it through Steam or something. Okay, on my end, it's 
So I gotta wait till 10. I gotta be official here. Although I think Nurki already closed it off. So you know what? We'll uh we'll do the Voron Day LDO giveaway right now. So how it's gonna work is I'm gonna draw your name uh off your Discord name. So I'm gonna run all the Discord names and holy Oh my god. Okay, it's gonna take a minute for me to select all this. So I'm going to put all the Discord names in, and that's how we're going to verify you. So uh, NERQ will contact you on Discord um, for all your contact information to send the LDO package. And if I'm not mistaken, LDO is letting you pick the color of the rails or the extrusions. Um, oh my god, how many people entered this? I'd show you this on screen, but I can't because of, uh, well, it's got people's emails. Or actually, I don't even know. Oh my god. Oh my god. Do I have a Discord? I, I, Eddie, I hang out on the Voron Discord. I'm also on like the, uh, I'm on the Railcore Discord, the 3D Printing Discord, um, 3D Printing Nerd Discord, I think I'm on that. But yeah, I'm on the Voron Discord. Uh, there's like 800 and something entrants. It's 862. So um, you know how Wheel of Names, how you can kind of see the names sometimes? Y you can't see the names right now. So this is everyone's Discord name who entered, okay? So it is now 10 o'clock. Somebody give me a number between six and nine. Seven. Seven it is. So, twofold for that. One, um, I'm going to shuffle it seven times now. That's going to be our randomizer, plus the actual randomizing of the draw. Two, YouTube really likes it when you guys all spam the chat. It looks really good on the metrics, so this is a stealth way of doing that. Okay, so we're going to shuffle this seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, go! Now my timing is off. Commander 70! You just won yourself an LDO V0 kit. Commander 70. See 7! Lucky number 7. Now you do not need to be in the chat to win this, Commander. So hopefully, um, you're there. So Near Q um, is going to grab your name here. I'm going to just copy it into the Discord just so we don't accidentally lose you. So there you go. So congratulations. You have won yourself a V0 LDO kit. It is everything but the printed parts. Um, if you uh, need printed parts, and there's the PIF Q, um, or it's a V0, you can print it yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna have to reload the page here because by the way, copy and pasting all those in almost crashed the website. Deleted. Okay. So we had 273 people sign up for The, uh, the $50 Amazon gift card from Thanks. Okay, so how it works is um, I told you to enter your YouTube account name. That's the name in chat, like the name next to your name in chat. Some people entered like URLs, so it's going to be interesting. But basically how it's going to work, I'm going to draw all the names um, and I'm going to at you in chat. And if you are in chat, you win. Simple as that. And I will forward your email or forward your information 
two thangs and uh, they will get a hold of you and you will get yourself a $50 Amazon gift card. Um, I believe it's $50 for whatever part of the world you're in. Um, but yeah, so let me just pull that up there. So I got everyone there. Okay. And if you entered in like the last like two minutes, I locked it off. Sorry. Okay. So let me see here. Let me see there. Okay. 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 So this is everyone's account. See, somebody entered their URL. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's going to work. It's two lines. Um, well, we'll find out. I just need to know who you are. So um, I need a number now between three and seven, three and seven, three and seven. And if you write a number outside of that, you're automatically banned from life from my channel. Seven. Oh, oh, I see a 3.9. Who put the 3.9? David, David. I think I wouldn't notice that. I'm on to you now. You're, you're on the list. You are on the list, David. You are on the list. Seven. Okay, shuffling seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel, spinning the wheel. Go! Big money, big money, big money. Actually, $50. Is that big money? I don't know. It's good money. And the good money is going to... Mike G at Mike. Who's Mike G? I got four mics in chat. Who is Mike G? 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 I see no Mike G in chat. Oh, there you are at Mike G. There you are. Okay, Mike. Congratulations, you win. Mike G. There you go. Okay. Let me copy that there. So congratulations, man. Uh, you got yourself a gift card. So the winner from the stream draw for the Amazon gift card is Mike G. Congratulations, man. Go get yourself some filament. I'm still disappointed in you, David. That I, I, I'm going to go to sleep. Not well because of that. Like, I, I trusted you, man. I trusted you. I thought we were friends. I thought we, I thought we had something going on. And um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed that. So the winners from the stream tonight, Commander and Mike. Congrats on you guys. I like giving away stuff. It is always fun. It is always fun. Okay. Now I'm going to celebrate. Tonight, because it is Voron Day, um, ooh, NearQ. Let me read out NearQs. Uh, NearQ, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for Jason LDO for always being so open with the Voron community and trying out some random guy's idea. Voron community loves LDO. They do do some good stuff over at LDO. So. Tonight we have Niagara Falls. Canadian whiskey. Canadian. Product of Canada. Rye whiskey. I don't know. I was that the LCBO was on sale. So we're going to roll with that tonight. While we put the bed of the printer together. But we still got an hour left. Me. 390. At 390. Did I talk about the Dragon Hot End? I've touched on it. Um, I want to know more information. Essentially, I don't like the idea of patenting the thing that Slice patented. But that's what they've done. 
Um, then there's a bunch of stuff in the background going on that I don't know. Nobody knows the whole story. People who say they know the story don't know the whole story because I've heard different things from different sources on both sides of the wall. So I'm just going to back away from it and just kind of say, um, I just want a good hot end at a good price. And I'm not a super huge fan of the sliced mosquito. I like the sliced mosquito. I've got two of them. Um, but I don't like the thermal paste and the fact that their whole thing is completely proprietary. But it is what it is. It's You're free to make whatever you want. So I personally like the dragon way of doing it better. Uh, it was better for maintenance purposes. A bit more form factors. And it was cheaper. But cost isn't everything. Again, I own two dragons or two mosquitoes. So, uh... It is what it is. We're going to let it play out. Apparently, they're going to fight it in court. We'll see. I don't know. Yes, for non-Ontarians, uh, if you want to buy liquor, you have to go to the uh, Liquor Control Board of Ontario. What is the ideal way to mount an ADXL345 on a Core XZ? Um, you're going to mount it to the um, tool head to do your X tuning, and then you're going to mount it to the bed for the Y tuning. Uh, I don't think the LDO kit is available for purchase, yes. I believe it's pre-production kits right now. So. Yeah, congratulations. I love how the draw just happened and I'm, I'm down 80 viewers. <laughs> Everyone's like, I didn't win, I'm out. Screw this. Had jokes on them. I'm giving away a full V2 right now. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That was a bad joke. I'm sorry, guys. I shouldn't tease you like that. Okay, where were we at? We're building a printer, right? That's what we're doing? Okay, I gotta put the bearings in. Let's put the bearings in. I never actually checked to make sure these fit in. Since when does China honor patents? There are certain patents that are global, that are enforceable. Uh, what is the status? We're still waiting on production units. So. So that just goes in flush, I guess, and that's it. Uh, what did I use in my ultrasonic? So what I actually do with my ultrasonic cleaner, how I use it, is um, I put whatever I'm cleaning in a baggie, and I fill the baggie with isopropyl alcohol, and then I just put in the ultrasonic filled with water. That way you don't need to fill the whole thing with whatever cleaning agent you're using. So I just use iso. So what I did was I, I left the rails on, or the carriages on the rails, I put them in a baggie of iso, and then I just stuffed that in the top of the... Uh, of the ultrasonic because water will transfer through the bag or the vibrations will transfer from the water through the baggie into the ISO. So you don't need to um, fill the whole thing up. Uh, come to Las Vegas. I live in Canada, man. I can't go anywhere. Like I'm in lockdown. I can't even go to like Home Depot to buy anything. It's super annoying. I want to put my shelf up here. I want to put a shelf here so I can put prints on it. I can't go buy wood unless I order it online and I'm not going to order a two by six online and go pick it up at Home Depot. Oh, it would help if I was putting it in straight. There we go. Okay, so we got those guys in. Now, when it goes to putting these in, um, you basically, it is going to stick out of the top because it needs to be flush to the bottom. And the bottom part is not the part that's sitting on your bed. It's, uh, it's this part. So it looks like that. Just follow the picture. Look at the holes. And then we're going to put that on all four. Okay. With M510s. Yada, yada. Yeah. 
Love the latest video on the print bed. Thank you. Uh, a lot of people like that video. Um, all I, I think I'm going to do more videos like that where I just record me working and then I figure out a voiceover later. Because that's what I did with that one and it turned out pretty good. So um, as for following it up, I don't know if I'll do a separate video on that because it might just be me doing it on the stream. Um, we shall see. It depends. Because I might install the bed off stream or I might install it on stream and then take it off and do a separate video on the installation. Because you, you, you're supposed to like mount the wires a certain way um, because you need strain relief and whatnot. You know, the bed's not moving that much. It does move. So you need proper strain relief to its mains and yada, yada, yada. So. And yes, I'm trying to keep the videos to under 20 minutes. I know my videos were getting a little long there for a while. Okay, so this guy can go there, I guess. So, um, uh, by the way, guys, for like the whole COVID thing, please try to avoid getting political. I really don't want politics. Like, we can all agree or disagree on whatever, but try to avoid the politics of stuff. And these mount relatively simply. They just kind of... No button. Great button. You just push it on, make sure all of these are facing the same way, and just make sure it's sitting flush with the extrusion when you screw it down. How many 3D printers do you have, and do you offer printing services? Oh, God. Uh, what is, this is printer number... Oh, shit. What do I got? I got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is printer number seven that I'm building. Um, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is printer number seven. Um, this is the fifth Voron of mine. And then, um, I have, oh God, I have a resin printer and two FDMs on the way from manufacturers. So the resin printer is, I have, I've never played with a resin printer before. So that's actually going to be fun. I'm actually looking forward to getting that because I've never played with a resin printer before. It's a mono or an any cubic. Mono 2K, any any cubic photon mono 2K. Um, so that should hopefully be in by the end of the month, I'm hoping. And then for the other printers, they're they're under three clouds. But um, what I'm gonna use those for is, I know a lot of people like the weekday streams. Um, the thing is, I don't wanna do builds on the weekday streams, just for the fact that I like to try and keep like the Saturday night as the, the main stream. You know, none of my streams have names and I don't have like, I don't have show names for anything. Um, so I think those printers that I'm getting, I'm going to save them for weekday streams because I can just open them, go through it. We can make fun of it. We can see what we like. And then we can uh, build it on a weekday stream. But it's nice and simple. And I can do it before work. Because I know a lot of the Europeans like the weekday streams because they're awake when I'm streaming. So uh, I think I'm going to save them for that. Oh, what are they? Um, I have a, what is it? It's a, a G tech something and a, um, a Mingda, I think it's called.
By the way, it, it's funny. Once you hit a certain point on YouTube, you start getting emails from everyone. Um, and like by everyone, I mean companies that I didn't even know existed and obviously scams. <laughs> but uh, basically my, my stance is, I for now, is you can send me whatever, but I won't review it unless I want to review it. Um, because let's be honest, you see one Ender 3 clone, you've seen them all. So if you want to send me something, I'll, I'll use it for a stream or something, but I won't review any anything unless I want to review it. So the uh, the resin printer, yeah, I'll do a review on it because I've never played with a resin printer before. I'm gonna, it's going to be fun. But for the, uh, the Ender clones, I'll just do a stream on them. I think eventually once I run out of space, I'll do a, a giveaway at the end of the year or something. FDM is better than SLA. Oh, I know. I, I, I like, um, I like FDM more than SLA. Like there's a reason I have building, uh, FDM printer number seven and I don't have a resin yet, but I, it is something I want to toy with. It's just, I wasn't going to touch one unless somebody wants to give one to me. And now somebody's wanting to give me one. So. So it's kind of like, you know, car reviewers. Not every car reviewer drives around in Lamborghinis, but every now and then they get given the chance to drive one. So I'll take one for a spin. And then I actually, I do want to play with the belt printer, but uh, again, that'll be if somehow Creality decides to send me one, but we'll see. So if I can't put a wall printer or uh, a belt printer on the wall, I'll just hang one of my Vorons from the ceiling or something. Four AM in Germany. What are you doing still awake? Go sleep. Holy heck. Just got my any cubic mono. It's funny. I had to watch Joel's video on the unboxing of it to figure out what it was. Just because I don't, I don't know mono. I don't, or I don't know resin. All I know resin is goopy resin that makes a mess and it's kind of annoying at times. So. Okay, guys in chat, uh, just please keep it civil about the whole dragon thing and whatnot. I don't like doing the mod job. There we go. Okay, so that's good there. So, oh, I see. Okay, so those go off there. And then I index the cross extrusion off that. Okay, that makes sense. So we'll do that. That makes sense. You still soak them into greaser? How long? Uh, for the bearings, I, I I have an ultrasonic now. So now I just throw everything in the ultrasonic um, and let it do its thing for like half an hour and then call it a day. I don't know how I went so long without an ultrasonic cleaner. I think RCF mentioned it one day in Discord and I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to buy one. And uh, my wife's like, it's your birthday soon. Why don't, why don't I buy it? I'm like, okay, that'll work. Now I have an ultrasonic. Okay, so that is uh, the bed, I guess. So check your work. Compare the assembled parts to the graphics shown here. Pock X, I just realized I won the V0. Congrats, man. Hey, we got the winner of the V0, everyone. Clap. I don't know if there's a clap emoji. Do the clap emoji. Do we have a clap emoji? Um, there we go. Everyone clap. 
for the winner of the V0. There we go. Congratulations. Um, have I tried the glasses and the ultrasonic? No, I have not yet. I often do Voron parts get revised whenever they get revised. Um, the V2.4, I think, is coming up on a year now. I bought one of those resin stuff. It was a good purchase because they're anyway. Yeah, the one I have is... Um, I bought it off Amazon. Well, okay. Actually, my wife bought it because... Hey, honey, it's my birthday. Buy me this. Um, it's a three liter one. It's nothing fancy. But what I did for, like, for example, this is... Oh, it's leaking. This is like the rail. I, I, I just put a Ziploc baggie in there uh, full of ISO and then fill the rest with water. That way I don't have to um, fill the whole thing with ISO, which eventually evaporates and you lose it all. Or whatever cleaner I decide to use. So, yeah. Yeah, Chris has got a point there. Not Nobody knows the whole picture yet, so let's just let it play out and then we'll we'll move on from there. Because honestly, people bitching on the internet never solves anything. And the internet's got a two-second memory, so... Let's build printer. Okay, so now I gotta put that... Okay, so that goes that way, actually. And now I need my front piece. Like, let's be honest, it, it, you're buying stuff from China, it, it takes three months to sort out anyway, so... No rush. I'm sure something will happen. There is my front piece. Front piece! Nope, that's the end pieces. That's the other end piece. Here comes the part where I go, shoot, did I not print it? And then I find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, still have a new, but a question. What I was asked, have you built a keyboard? No, I have not built a keyboard. Um, it's another Core XY. Okay, there's a lot of Core XYs out there that are good. Uh, Keyboard's a good design. Railcore is a good design. I like the Railcore. Uh, the Core XY is, well, cross gantry. It's not. But Core XY is best XY, in my opinion. There's a lot of good Core XYs out there. I like Vorons personally. I'm on the Voron dev team, so that's kind of like my thing. But I have not built a Keyboard. Um, I It's hard to justify building a printer I don't need um that i don't have like I, I build the warrants for the content and people like them and like i'm building toasty boy for a specific use case plus i haven't done a v1 build on stream at some point i am going to build a legacy i do not need a legacy but i know you guys want me to build a legacy at some point so i will build a legacy um for a keyboard i i think it's a good design but it's not really my thing Right. Some people drive Fords, some drive uh, Chevys. That's kind of how it is. So. M16 or M560. M560. Oop. Drop the bag. Get in the bag. Can you donate to a school in Ontario? I might do that. I know, um, was it Tom Salander? He, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, Salander. Um, he gets, because I think his address or his P.O. Box, I need to get a P.O. Box, by the way. Um, but, um, I think he has his P.O. Box on his website and, like, random companies will send him stuff. And his thing is, if I don't expect it, I'm just giving it away. So he'll just donate it to a school in his area. Um, I... Their, their schools aren't open here right now, so I don't even know what's going on with that. Um, so it has great cooling, Joe, but I print ABS, which doesn't need cooling. Well, it doesn't need great cooling. It just needs, you know, a gnat breathing on it. It's just hard justifying a printer I don't need, said no one ever. I'm running out of room, okay? Like... This is my bench. I had to take two printers out of here for the stuff for the V1 and put them down here. Like V0 and the Bonsai live down here now. So this is it. So I'm going to have to put a shelf up there to put printers on. Um, like I, I'm out of room and I've got three on the way.
Like, I'm not at Joel levels. Joel has, I, I was talking to him, uh, I think he has 40 something printers right now. Okay, so I think it's the flat part goes up and then it goes down. Yeah. Gonna need to put another breaker in soon. I, I, the most I've run at once is three. I haven't run them all at once. Um, my plan is I'm hoping that I have the time this year to turn the garage into an actual like insulate it and set it up because I like once I start doing Avro stuff like actually building a CNC I can't obviously have a CNC running in my house right my wife will kill me um so I'm hoping to at least turn my garage into something and my breaker panel is in the garage so I can easily add circuits in the garage So I got to center this now. I don't think it's got to be perfect because the, uh, what's that? 80, 88. Ninety two. Ninety two. Cause I could just move this to wherever the bed needs it to be. There we go. That's good. Good enough for now. I'll just shift it later. Okay. Yes. Av Avro is a birder machine. It, it does the cutty milli, but it ain't the Voron drilly machine. Okay. So we have our frame together with the Y portion on. We have our bed, and now we are at that portion. Gonna want either ventilation for your 3D printer or to the outside or a really good filter. The resin fumes are no good. Uh, my printer, this room that I'm in right now is in my basement. The vent is blocked and the door stays shut all the time. So anything that takes place in this room pretty much stays in this room, so. I don't think I need 400 amps. Okay, so that's the bed. Hey, it's got a bed now. So what are we at? I gotta put the rods in, apply lubrication. A thin layer of lubrication will prevent rust. Okie dokie. Well, the grease smearing all over them will probably help with that. Okay, so I put those in, I put the end caps on. And then I slide it. In. Okay, so I got to put this on its back. And we're going to put the rods in. Oh. Hey, I guess what already has dog hair on it. Well, because Ryan, I don't run the printers while I'm filming because that screws up the audio. Like, I, I should be, I have stuff queued up to print on here that I'm not printing because I knew it would be printing during the stream. And I, I care about your guys' auditory experience. So I, I take care of you. That's why I have the soundproofing. And now I need the little end stop dealies. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Of course, I can't find eight. Uh, it's always the last one I can't find. I better not actually be missing this. Come yeah, on, where are you? Where are you? I know I printed him. I'm on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where'd you go? I miss you so. Gosh darn it to heck. Seriously? Okay. Here we go. No. 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 Did I not print eight of them? No. No. I might not have printed one. Well, this sucks. Yeah, I might have only printed seven of them. sucks because I can't really put the uh did it fall on the ground? I can't really put the bed in without all seven because then I have to pull the whole bed out to uh put it in. Shoot. This sucks. Three-legged bed. Yeah three points to find a plane, right? A live 3D print. No, here's the bad part. All my parts are three D three um CF nylon. So what I have to do is um, I have to swap out the nozzle. I have to get the nylon in the dry box. I have to run the nylon through the dryer, run it, put it in the dry box, um, and then print it. Oh, and put glue stick on the bed because I don't want to risk ruining my new PI with it. Gosh darn it. I could have sworn I did seven of these or eight of these. Four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven. Yep. Poopy. Oh well. What time is it anyways? Ah, we're getting near the end anyways. By the time I finish printing it anyways, it'll be 11, which is end time for stream. Oh, I'll get these ones on at least. quickest way to find it is to print another. Pretty much, I, after a stream, I'll probably uh, start printing it, and then I'll find it. Because also, I don't have the profile that I used to print it on this computer. So. Actually, yeah. Yep, this is going to suck. Thoughts on the Nova? Um, the Nova is like the same category as the Fetus HIC, um, Dragonfly HIC. It's a, a fancy volcano. Now, I gave the Fetus HIC a try because it's trying something a little bit different with the integrated heat break into the uh, nozzle itself, which does have some downsides. Um, but it's, it's very niche 
And it's one of those things where if you don't really need that super high flow, uh, there's really no point to it, I think. So. Backwards. Yeah, let's grab the greasy rod to try and pull stuff off. Okay. There we go. So now I got that on. So now we can't go any further. This sucks. I hate having to print one specific thing because I could print it in ABS. It'd be perfectly fine in ABS, but then it won't match. And then it'll be the one that doesn't match. And I won't like that. How am I? How did I screw that up? How did I not print eight? Just one, I printed eight. Did it fall underneath? Nope. Oh well. Did it fall on the ground? No. Am I blind? Maybe. Oh well. It is what it is. So anyways, how it would work now is this would slide in sideways and then we'd screw it in. But this is kind of a good point to stop anyways. Because after this um, is pretty much moving on to the X gantry. So next week we'll probably be finishing the bed install and then putting the actual X gantry in. Because right now we only have the Y. Um, we don't have the X portion. So we'll do that next week. So um, we've got 20 minutes left. How y'all doing tonight? I'm going to swap this rail out. I don't like that rail. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to have a chit chat while I swap. <gasps> Found it. Found it. Huzzah. I'm still going to swap that rail out, but I'll do it off stream. You thought you, I would let you go to bed. No bed. Only print. Okay, let's get the Z done. Let's get the Z done. Okay, so now this goes in like show and nothing lines up oh my this is oh my god <laughs> you mean you don't fit there we go that goes in there then you flip it up and then and you flip it up okay so I kind of have to Slide this down. Slide you up. And then flip it up and kind of try and keep it all not falling everywhere. Oh my god. Because I don't have it screwed in. I know why the instructions say this, but it's still a pain in the butt. Fall out, don't fall out, don't fall out. There we go, okay. 
You can stay like that for now. Okay. Woo! What are these M510s and these guys? All the M510s. We use a lot of M510s. It's always the last place. It was underneath my China ceramic plate. Oh, hey, you're still live. Brian, I stream for three hours every Saturday night. Sometimes we run out of shit to do, but by golly, we get it done. Turn the music up. Let's switch the music up. What are we at now? It's going to be a late stream tonight. Um... Let's see here. What do we got? Stream beats. Hi fi, lo fi. House rock, lo fi. Let's do the dubstep. We're going to do some dubstep. Why not? And what I'm going to do is grab a box of filament to hold this up. Oh, hey, look at that. We have a fancy box of filament from this wonderful company called Sparta 3D. I wonder what they sell. I wonder if they are a good source of 3D printer products and filament in Canada. They might be. I do not know. There we go. <laughs> if you're blatant about it, it's not shilling. But all in fairness, if you live in Canada, Sparta 3D is good people. They've donated some stuff for this stream, for the uh, the build. And they carry a lot of stuff that you can't get in Canada, like LDO stuff. So, they be good people. Although I think it's just one guy. And their channel on the Discord is pretty much Canada, too. Dang it. Okay, that one's not good. Bad. Ex bad. Bad T-nut. You get out of there. There we go. Okay. Uh, why were the handles removed? I think they were removed. They were removed when the okay. So the handles are actually meant to be the rest for the, the panel. So your front door was supposed to rest on the handles. Okay. When the front door went to being a swing out style, they got rid of the handles, but it's a rep wrap. You can build it however you want. So if you want the top handles, just go download them from the V2.1 directory. Like I still run the top handles on both my V2s because, well, I haven't swapped over to using the, uh, the panels, the front doors that open because, uh, every time I cut it, try to cut a, uh, acrylic, I break it. Okay, so you're screwing in the extrusions and you're not tightening them. You just want them like loose so you can move them around because nothing's in position yet, right? It's just kind of there.
I'm waiting for somebody to complain about the music. <laughs> oh, the front handles won't fit on with the new doors. That would be it, too. I thought you were referring to the top handles. Actually, uh, that, that is what that spool is for. It's the, um, I haven't tried it yet, but I do have some green TPU from Sparta 3D. That's what was in the box. Oh, Dark Squid, you're banned. Mods, ban them. This actually is kind of annoying music wise. Uh, let's go back to the house. Where's the house music? Stream Beats House. Music is low. Okay, I'll turn it up. I don't have one of the fancy stream setups where I can hear the uh, what's actually like you guys are hearing. So uh, I kind of have to go by. Oh, music's loud. Music's not loud. I can't really hear it while I'm streaming. Okay, so now I got the bottom in, so I gotta flip this bitch. It's gonna fall down. It's not square, so it's gonna be not happy where it's at. Now it's gonna fall the other way. Oh, that is... Oh, you know your bed is all squared up when it does that when it moves. This is really good. I'm happy I found that piece. I really did not want to set everything back up for CF Nylon to print literally a plate, a piece that'll take less than 20 minutes. I'm gonna try and repeat. I, I try, uh, Chris, I, I just forget, unfortunately, half the time. That's why I have the chat overlay on the stream. Um, but I don't want to make the chat overlay too big that it blocks the stream. So it's kind of like, I, I do what I can. Sorry. It's my first day. Ah, shoot. Wrong way. Here on the CAD. Let's see how far I gotta space this. So. Inspect. We're going from that surface to there. Look at that. What is that? 44 mil. Okay. So I gotta shift this way that way. Okay. I need 44 millimeters. Okay. 
right there. That is 44. Um, I've only ever used PA09, and I have no issues with it, so that's what I use. I can see the sun starting to rise. Time to go to bed. Woo! Good morning! That is... oh, oh. That is, that is, I... Oh, that is, that is, yeah. I know, like, watching me is cool and awesome and super entertaining. You should never miss a live stream, but... That is late, man. That is late. It's 44 there. I ain't no expert craftsman. I've always figured like watching me build printers is akin to uh, getting piano lessons from somebody who's one lesson ahead of you. I've just done it a few times already. Measurement from the stem. Yeah, good point. 
it's the bed though as long as it's the same if if my bed is like a half millimeter out of location on the y not really a huge deal let's take a look here inspect go from that surface Uh, I hate having multiple different CAD programs in my life. Okay, so that is 61 millimeters. Or no, sorry, 57. 56.9. I can live with that. What size is this? This is a 250. This is a spec 250 build. Uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 for XY motors is fine. You really honestly aren't going to see much of any uh, improvement though. It's not like, um, okay, I have to definitely play around with some of this. Some, some alignment issues. Now comes the part where we sit there and fiddle with squaring stuff up for a while. Okay. Good there. That's why. Let everything float, find its home, and then tighten it. Thanks for the show. Yeah, I'm going to be ending the stream in a, a little bit here. So, for the last like five, ten minutes here, open floor. If anyone's got any questions about anything, or we call it a night. Any suggestions? Build printer. One of these is not happy in its current position. Something is not happy here. Why is not happy here? Something is not happy, so we let it all float. We find out what is not happy. How much wood could a woodchuck? Eight spools. Four on Delta. Um, Probably never, unless Timmet ever finishes this. Remember, there's no like really design goals of the Voron team, right? It's just a bunch of guys, you know, throwing designs on the wall and every now and then one kind of sticks and gets developed to the end.
It's not right. I'll have to play with that. I'll play with it during the week off stream. Make sure there's probably some alignment issue I'm not noticing. It'll be easier to take a look at when I'm not streaming. Would a legacy be a good fit for a dual uh, extruder like your Switchwire? Um, yeah, any any fixed gantry is better for dual extrusion. The the V2 is kind of a problem because it also you have to deal with it moving in the Z. So you got to worry about it moving in X, Y, and Z. Um, anything where the gantry is fixed in either the X, Y plane or the um, what is it? The XZ plane should be okay. Why aren't you happy? Something's not happy. I'll have to fiddle with it off stream. Have I used the bigger spools? I have not. Um, they're not really that common up here. Um, and I, I buy eSun ABS Plus by the case usually. So I haven't really bought in the five kilogram spools. I had a two, did I have a two kilo? No, I haven't. That was different. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. We've got the, uh, we got the bed frame installed. I gotta swap out. I'll, I'll fiddle with this a little bit during the week and make it running smooth. Um, I'm sure you guys don't wanna sit here and watch me tinker around aligning rails for, I don't even know how long until I get it sorted out. That's one of those things you gotta tinker with and it doesn't make for good content during a live stream. It's more of a condensed down video thing. So uh, I'm gonna call a stream there for the night. Hope you guys all enjoyed the stream tonight. I wanna give a huge shout out to thangs.com for sponsoring tonight's stream. Again, I do have a link in the description there if you want to print one of these nice little Stay Puft Marshmallow Man that I ran off yesterday, testing out the High Flow Hot End from Fetus. So if you want to print a little Stay Puft Marshmallow Man of yourself by Chaos Core Tech, there's a link in the description. Go down there, create an account, share some things, download some things, and thangs.com. For those that won the LDO kit and the gift card from Thangs, congratulations to you guys. Um, it's always fun giving away stuff on stream. I always have a good time doing that. I hope you learned something new tonight. Be safe out there. Wash your hands and have a good night. Cheers.
by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.